Well, I think uh, it is 446. So with that, welcome everyone to our work session. And I so appreciate everyone um, being able to be here in attendance. And um, just because I'm not sure everyone will be able to see each other and we have some guests joining us, um, I'm just gonna do a quick rundown on those that have logged in so we all know who's here. And uh, I'll do that quickly. And then um, Dr. Ricky Smith, I'll hand it back over to you um, to lead us through this discussion. Um, so I have Director Amber Fields, Principal Brian Bailey, Tiger High, Director Carol Kinch, Director Darren Bernard, Director David Moore, Board Member Joe Zertsny, Board Member Karen Emerson, Linda Mohol. Hello, Linda. Great to have you here with us as well from the 12th and Chamber, Marty Wine. From, oh, I just lost my list, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, Marty Wine, uh, City Manager, City of Tiger, Michael Galerba, Principal of Baldwin High School, Patty Roberts, Executive Assistant, Principal Russ Ramos from Creekside, uh, Director Sharon Fox, Board Member, Director Susan Bernard, um, Director of uh, Information Technology. I see Susan twice, so Susan must be running things to keep us going. Uh, Dr. Ricky Smith, uh, Director Todd Robson, and Director Rose. Did I miss anybody? Okay, very good. Dr. Ricky Smith. Uh, Chair, I wonder if we might want to just give it a moment because we did have confirmation from all four of our district uh, mayors that they would be in attendance, and I do not see any of them listed um, Great. on the on the list. Uh, so I'm wondering if maybe. A minute or two more um, might be useful in, in making sure that, that they get in on the front, the front end of the conversation. So, are you willing to dance for us? <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Is Director Bowman on the call yet? I do not see him yet, no. So we were at 4.45 time, right? Uh, okay. Um, and, and I realize that all of us are probably doing what we've all been doing, which is hopping from, from one platform to the next all day long. So um, maybe a, a moment or more. And, and I think with Marty here, at least, we'll have one municipality um, identified. And then certainly if they are able to join us later, perhaps we can, can move forward. But Very good. And I will... Um, I'll text Dr. Bowman just to do a check-in because if he, um, uh, I was just like, what was I going to do? Oh, God, I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Linda. Oh, thank you, Linda. Yeah. Okay. And Mayor Gibson just joined. Oh, great. Thank you, Patty. Oh, wonderful. Good to see you, Mayor. So Linda, how are things going as you prepare Washington County or as part of that process of trying to reopen? <laughs> Do you know, it's been um, rather chaotic. There's a number of questions that are up in the air and um, the governor's rulings, are they guidance? Are they mandates? It's been kind of hard for businesses to understand. So I've been working with Representative Prusak back and forth sharing questions, and she's been a wonderful resource. I right. really have appreciated that relationship. Um, PPE is still not readily available, particularly for small businesses. They need to order in quantities of 25 pieces, and they're requested to order like 125,000. So that's been a significant challenge right now for them, but we're hopeful that the county will stockpile for us, and then we'll be able to start distributing. 
Um, the county is providing um, signage in languages, and so I've ordered for our city a bunch of different languages, so hopefully we can cover almost any need. So it's it's obviously still chaotic, and, and especially with the, the ruling today, it's even more chaotic if, if her orders are, are overturned, which from my perspective, we can only be hopeful. So, well, yeah. interesting times for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, so thank you. Thanks for, um, yeah, I'm sure it's incredibly, uh, yeah, uh, complex for sure. Um, so Dr. Ricky Smith, what are you thinking? I think when we have you know, representation from city of Tigard, thank you, um, Mayor Bubnik, good to see you, um, as well. And, uh, Mayor Ken, thank you for joining us. I know that uh, we eventually uh, we'll have Durham's, uh, the Durham mayor as well. Um, but perhaps I could sort of, I could set the stage for today's conversation, uh, Chair, and yeah. how we how we would like, you know, the purpose of coming together, how we might, uh, some of the information that we'll be discussing, um, and, uh, and then, you know, any other items that our mayors um, and chambers would like us to, to consider as we move forward. Um, the purpose today is many of you were at the table when we made the initial decision to close the schools. And I want to say thank you um, for, for being there with us and helping us think through that. Um, I think what we have all learned is that closing was one thing. Reopening is entirely different. Um, uh, because the science now has finally caught up and we know what we're dealing with and potentially what we will continue to be dealing with. Um, and so today the agenda items are first and foremost to talk about how we can work uh, with you um, and to the best of our ability align um, our facility use uh, with the reopening of parks uh, and recreational opportunities in, in our municipalities. Uh, while being mindful that we have separate guidance that is guiding schools currently um, relative to um, we how long we need to remain closed, which for us is June 30, then uh, begin a reopening process in the summer and then certainly looking to what the 2021 school year will be. So this evening you're going to hear from uh, Director Darren Bernard who handles our facilities. Uh, and get a sense of some of the um, opportunities and challenges and then have some discussion. Uh, Director Amber Fields, uh, who is also on this call, will provide you an update as well as our principals are happy to answer any questions around the uh, graduation celebrations planned for the class of 2020. Um, and then I'm happy to provide uh, some you know, light touches to what we think the 2021 school year may be um, and uh, some of the opportunities, again, uh, collaboratively across our community for um, aligning our work um, and supporting each other as we navigate um, the next school year. So with that, um, I would um, invite uh, Director Darren Bernard to share his screen and walk us through um, our facilities um, situation and then have a little conversation with that. And I am now going to mute myself. So Darren, it's all you. Okay. So good evening, everyone. I'm gonna share my screen. And... So can everyone see my screen? I can't see people, so. Yes, Aaron, I can see it. Sorry. Okay, thank you. We're all giving you a thumbs up and you can't tell. Okay, there we go. I can't see anybody. Yes, I don't know if you can hear me, but I can see it. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Peter. So we will all begin. I just want to thank everyone for um, joining in on this meeting because, as you know, it's been a a challenge, a challenging time, and we in our both our in our communities um, really enjoy the outdoor spaces that our parks and our schools are able to offer. And so as we have closed some of those facilities down and, and limited access, it's been a challenge to um, change people's behavior of what they're used to doing. So tonight um, I put together just a quick, and I won't go through everything. I shared this link with uh, Patty Roberts. And so I think if people want this presentation, Patty can email that to them. And so you can go through it. There's a couple links on there that with additional information that we won't cover tonight if that makes sense. I actually added it to the board agenda so they could go on. I'm happy to email it, but it's also okay. available on with our board agenda online. Great. Thank you, Patty. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll start off with just kind of what we know and then recommendations from, you know, the CDC. And so, um, you know, currently what we know is we got some current, some additional guidance on Friday, May 15th um, from the um, ODE. And so what we know is we're going to follow the governor's executive order, which is in effect until June 30th. I don't know if that changed after today's um, ruling, but so we'll wait and see as we've all been um, trying to navigate this really on a daily basis. And then what we do know is that schools currently will begin offering some form of services in a modified way in July. And then two two links that I've added to this, one is OSA, so that's around athletics, and there's some guidance there. There are OSAs meeting on a weekly basis, trying to figure out um, sports and activities, and what does that look like now, what does that look like moving into the fall, and so there's a lot of conversation going on with that, and then also I provided a link um, to the Friday guidance of May 15th from the Oregon Department of Education. So what we know from the CDC, uh, when they first came out with their guidelines, and they've been updated, but currently when I went to, to their location today, or their website today, they say don't use playgrounds, and there's a variety of reasons why they really are a challenge to touch points and how to clean them. And then they also say don't participate in organi organized activities and sports. And so we know that's a little bit of a moving target as well, but that's their current um, thinking at this point, and um, again, we'll be getting more guidance um, really week to week. And so, one thing I want to talk about is how are TTSD facilities used? So, we know just similar to the parks of our cities, um, our community uses our facilities for sports practices, and we have games there. And the community really uses, um, depending on the facility, for exercise on our tracks and stadiums and turf. They use our tennis courts. Um, where we have pathways or walkways, those are used often. Um, our covered play areas in our elementary schools are used really on a daily basis, especially when, in poor weather. The practices, um, pickleball has taken over a few of our places, and they're all adults playing. Um, as I'm guessing, some of the tennis courts and things like that are closed down um, out in the city. And basketball. And so we've had to really navigate how do we close down our facilities um, currently and try to keep people um, safe and making sure people are, um, are social distancing and our message so far has been our school facilities are closed. We also have lots of dog walkers and our facilities are used for meetings, tons of different meetings throughout the day, celebrations, there's lots of birthday parties that happen in our parking lots and they continue to happen in our parking lots um, as we drive around. People are trying to social distance but that stuff's still happening. Okay, um, some things that we have coming up this summer. Um, you know, our job is to, our summertime is used for cleaning and maintaining our facilities, and so that's happening. We've had a reduced force, and people are starting to come back, but that's going to continue happening at all of our school district sites. We have limited summer programming scheduled right now, and a lot of it's up in the air, um, but we will have some programming we know at our schools. We have three daycare providers currently operating, and they'll be operating this summer at Deer Creek, Bridgeport, and Mary Woodward Elementary. So um, those campuses will be busy with kids off and on and using the playground under certain guidelines. And then, again, many offerings are on hold. We have camp, you know, athletic camps. We have driver's ed. We have summer school, a multitude of programming that... Um, some of it will take place in a modified form, and some um, we are not quite sure yet what that's going to look like. We also, as folks know, have a lot of construction projects going on across the district and on our campuses, and again, trying to keep people safe. We have six secure, we have six sites where we have, we're putting in secure vestibules. So that's Walton Elementary, Hazelbrook Middle School, Alberta Rider, um, CFT, Deer Creek, and Metzger Elementary Schools. We have large paving projects happening um, right now at Walton High School and we'll be starting up at Hazelbrook Middle School. We have roofing projects at our district office, at Byram Elementary, at Tiger High School. Um, got some fire alarm upgrades. We have a track, which will be exciting. That's going to be going in up at Alberta Rider. Uh, not a full-size track, but a, a reduced size that we typically have at some of our elementary um, sites. Uh, Tiger High School Phase 2 will... Uh, be completed at the end of this summer, all fingers crossed. 
Um, we have the swell out front of Twalton, or Twalton High School that needs to be planted and completed. And then Twalton, Twalton Middle School is under construction. So you can see that impacts of our schools, just about everyone is being touched in some way or has some sort of programming in it. Some concerns that we have um, at TTSD, um, which is, it's not new to us, but it's probably a little bit enhanced without people at school on a regular basis. Some of our campuses are, um, we just don't have the typical number of adults and activity that we normally do during this time. So we're seeing an increase in vandalism. We're seeing quite a bit of unauthorized use of our facilities. We see lots of dogs off leash. Um, you know, we do have safety concerns. Um, just the other day at 12th High School, I was there, and here comes a bunch of people just kind of walking right through the middle of the construction where we have um, excavation going on, and they just ignore signs and walk right through the open areas and stuff like that. And that's happening at a lot of our schools, um, Tiger High School as well. And then one thing that's concerning is even though our two high schools are locked up, our stadiums are locked up, so you'd have to climb a fence to actually get into them. Um, we're having a daily daily basis. We're finding dog feces left all over the turf where people are um, cutting chains, cutting padlocks, um, really on a daily basis. Um, Walton High School has been a real challenge as we've had the walking path that we've had to shut down. And uh, because of that, I think people feel like that, you know, Whatever they're feeling, they feel like that they should have access to those fields. So they're, again, breaking gates, cutting chains, really on a daily basis. So we're having to monitor those daily. And then we also are concerned about the social distancing of our, of our community members. So with that, here's a few pictures of some of the things I'm talking about around vandalism. These are all like gates. So you can see, um, I don't know, if, can you see my cursor? Can folks see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going blind here. So, <laughs> so these are gates. You can see there's a padlock there attached. Most of them, you'll find there's padlocks attached, but keep, people have kicked in the gates. And so when they kick them, it spins the, the latch. And so we've had to go back through and chain all of them. Now that we've gone back through and chained the majority of them, um, folks are coming through with bolt cutters and actually cutting the locks or cutting the chains. Um, we're finding it daily. And so you can see some examples. This one here is an actual gate was just bent, so it doesn't no longer reaches the pole. So they're and that's really physically damaging the gate. Here's a, this one here is at Fallon Middle School at the tennis court. That's been a problem of people breaking the latches, cutting chains, um, crawling under and over the fencing there, um, damaging the softball. Or there's a um, Babe Ruth field there, and so we had some damage done this last week to that field. And so these are just examples of the fencing. Here you can see in this top right-hand corner is Walton High School. We have put um, portable fencing across our um, across the driveway with signs in it, but on a regular basis, people stop, look at the sign, and keep on going. So um, rules don't apply to everyone. And then those gates keep getting moved. We have to keep moving them back on a regular basis. So just some challenges there with fencing. And then here's some vandalism. We've had quite a bit. These are ones I haven't had pictures. So up here at Fowler, you see we we have put some um, barriers across the track to try to slow people down. That's a facility that's probably one of our most impacted. We have really at any one time, we 25 to 30 people on campus at some point between trying the tennis courts or the track, just a really popular area. And um, continue to try to shoot people off, but then they come back. We've We've used caution tape. It's taken down daily. And so we're, we're trying to um, find that balance. So we know we can't monitor it 24-7. And fortunately, you know, a lot of our people are practicing social distancing and are, are, are doing a pretty good job. We do have a few that, again, rules don't apply, and you ask them to move on, and, and they don't want to. You can see uh, we've had several instances of homeless folks because, again, adults are not on our campuses on a regular basis. Um, they're starting to sleep under covered areas and things like that. A lot of our sheds have been broken into. There's equipment inside. Um, actual Durham Elementary. This one's at Durham Elementary. We've had another one. That one's on the playground. We have another one outside the playground. The door was actually torn off of it. Um, lawnmower was stolen. We've had at Tiger High School in the stadium, we've had vehicles broken into. They actually have to climb the fence. And so we've, 
we've had some damage, unfortunately, to our district properties um, as we've been closed down. Real quick, here's an overview of Twalton High School, so you can kind of see our areas. Um, I've only picked a few schools here that are heavily used. Twalton High School, if you can see my cursor, here's um, Twalton High School, Byron Elementary over here to the right. And you can see this white path all the way around the outside that goes around. So that's the walking path that's very, very popular. Twalton High School has the ability to be um, locked. And so that facility has been locked. So people have been using um, Byram. They've been kind of just kind of going in circles on that path there. And that's been heavily used as well as a covered area. Um, every day we find people on the high school property where they climb fences or are unfortunately cut chains or locks to get in. Um, one of the challenges we have is the path goes on the perimeter, but unfortunately people don't stay on the path. And then they go over and have access to um, the turf fields. We've had lots of practices up there taking place. Our, our community sports programs have been um, good partners with us and not having practices. But then again, we have a lot of parents that are their kids' teams coaches and they're, they're kind of running unauthorized practices or trying to at times. And so we've had to lock up our soccer goals and move our lacrosse goals and they keep reappearing and, and things like that. So this is a challenging site. But also, and one thing that makes it challenging is that that uh, walking path that people have grown to love and use on a really regular basis. Also, at Twalton High, um, dogs off leash is a big deal there. Um, we have a lot of people just driving up and a lot of our school sites opening the door, letting their dog out, let it go do its business, that people never get out of the car and, and then get back in. We see that a lot at Bridgeport, a lot of our elementaries where you can get close to a field. Here is um, Fowler. You can see here's the back one. There's Fowler. Here's the baseball the area that was just vandalized. Tennis courts are over here that are heavily used by the community um, or have been. And the track is really popular. I talked to the Tiger Police um, this last week, and they several officers said that even at night time, two, three, four in the morning, they're finding people there out exercising um, all the time, seven days a week. So it's a really heavily used facility. And we cannot fence that facility off completely. We don't have um, fencing all around it. And then Tiger High School has been a little bit of a challenge up here in the upper right-hand corner. It's a temporary parking lot. And those, um, we have new tennis courts in this area. But that's heavily used for fields. A lot of people walk their dogs there. And, and then the turf, um, people are walking through the construction zone, climbing fences to get into the turf on a daily basis. Um, and so that's been a very challenging side as well. Um, not all of our elementary schools are as challenging, but these are three of the highlighted ones. And so with that, I think this, you know, the conversation that we're going to have or hopefully have is just really an opportunity. How do we work together to serve our community? We, we serve the same community, um, same patrons. And so we, you know, all, we have great support for our schools, great support for our community. So how do we navigate this together as we, start opening back up Washington County. How do we work together as a city and as the district for our facilities? Um, again, like Dr. Sue mentioned at the beginning, schools might have a little bit different um, expectations than maybe our parks do, or maybe we're a little bit running a little bit behind um, what our parks are able to do. And then how can we collaborate you know, to our community? How can we message um, to them of our expectations and how we want to open up as we move through each month of the summer, you know, as soon as the weather gets good, it's going to be a challenge. And so what we do know is that, you know, we will have some sort of school in a modified way this summer. Uh, we'll be looking at how do we bring back small groups for activities. Maybe that's going to be looking at, you know, could be athletics, could be activities. We don't know. Um, could be in small groups. Um, so again, we're having conversations on a weekly basis with OSWA and other organizations and what does that look like? And, um, you know, how do we message how we could have some restrictions on our facilities until we're fully open again? So that's the that's what I have for you. So I think we can open up now for a conversation. Thank you, Darren. I appreciate um, your work here. And, and Chair Wolf, um, I would um, at this point uh, ask for your facilitation uh, relative to these questions. You know, I know that our mayors um, and our cities are taking heavy heat 
relative to why our facilities aren't open. Um, and so first and foremost, I think it's important um, for us to be able to share that from the, uh, per the governor's executive order, schools are closed until June 30. At the end of June 30, we are then open um, and, and are encouraged to be part of a summer camp recreation process. Um, so um, I realize that that may be, may be different than what you all are working on. And so um, it, that's part, part of our process this evening is to offer you the challenges, but also more importantly, um, the opportunities of how we can work together and message together um, a, as we move forward. Uh, so with that, I would open it up uh, to Chair Wolf's facilitation and, you know, answer any questions that you might have, but to see if we can have some conversation about um, how we can move forward together. So this is uh, Ken Gibson. Are you good? No, um, Ken, go ahead, because actually all I was going to do was just do a quick segue. It's odd, right, being in a Zoom room as opposed to a table where you can connect with everyone and, you know, go, OK, so um, so I appreciate your willingness to jump right in. And and so you have the floor, sir. And so please, um, we'd love to hear what you're thinking. And, and I can appreciate everything that Darren said. You know, I think every city is really faced with some of the uh, things that you've talked about, maybe not at the same level. Uh, definitely uh, dogs off leash has become a real issue for our community park. Uh, we have posted new signs all over asking people to observe the leash laws uh, for King City. However, uh, it's being ignored by the most part. Uh, we have a, a field that we just uh, renovated for sports activities and folks believe that that's uh, the green light to let their dogs run off leash and exercise their dogs. So we're battling that constantly. And all we can really hope for is people, for people to do the right thing. Uh, as far as our park goes, uh, we have a basketball court. We never did shut down our tennis court. That's been open uh, from the very beginning of the uh, Stay Home, Stay Safe uh, program. Uh, so uh, that's worked out okay. What we did for the basketball court, and I took uh, the lead from uh, Mayor Snyder of uh, Tiger, we took down the basketball hoop so that there is no hoop available and then barricaded uh, the basketball court because we felt uh, that that was the only way we could really prevent people from engaging in that. Uh, as far as a uh, summer sports program, there's an organization called uh, Skyhawk. Uh, that had planned to have summer camps at our King City Community Park. However, because of some of the guidelines that they're going to have to deal with, they have to have a bathroom with running water. And we don't have that at the King City Community Park. So they have had to back away from any activity uh, this summer uh, at uh, our community park. And I received an email, and I believe that they have found the location somewhere in Tigard. Uh, maybe Mayor Schneider or someone else might uh, know about this part of it. But listen, you know, we're, we are all in this together. And, you know, the messaging that we try to send uh, to our residents, you know, let's be uh, reasonable about what we're trying to do. I know that people want to get out and I know that people want to have some form of recreation. And yeah, it's a wonderful idea to have your dog run and get exercise as well. But it's offensive to some people who have small children and these people lose control of their dogs and it becomes a safety uh, concern for all of us. So uh, we have posted information on our website. Uh, like I said, we put up new signs uh, and we will continue uh, to try to make sure that we do as much messaging as we possibly can in order to maintain some order uh, throughout uh, the rest of this situation. So I, I really appreciate what you guys are attempting to do, uh, but you guys need to really just stay in communication with us and let us know what else we can do in terms of uh, policing these situations. The King City uh, Police Department uh, really is uh, prepared to help any way we can uh, with Deer Creek. 
to keep Deer Creek safe and uh, to keep the vandalism and those kinds of things at a minimum. Uh, so we just need to make sure that that line of communication uh, stays open. And I know that we're all anxious for the kids to continue uh, their education uh, to the best form possible. But uh, these are not normal times, and we all understand that. So, uh, but uh, I just wanted to give you an update. We have some of the same problems uh, that you guys are experiencing on your school properties. Mayor Ken, I wish to say thank you. Um, as you well know, I'm I'm a resident now of your fine community, and um, uh, there isn't an evening where I do not see a patrol car come up around our cul-de-sac, which is literally right across the street from Deer Creek. Yeah. Um, as I walk, um, and and I will walk through the property at Deer Creek, um, it's clear that um, there has been you know some vigilance there in terms of patrol. So I want to say thank, you, um, yeah, for that effort. I know it's. It, it, it's it's no small thing, uh, particularly given the size of your force and all the other calls that you have to take. So thank you. And, it's, and, and we appreciate that. We really do. Well, um, thank you, Mayor, very much. And I will I would say I see Frank. I don't see Jason, but we'll start with uh, Mayor Bubnick and then move yeah, to Jason. If you need Maureen, so. Um, okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks, Maureen. Just real quick, it just... Uh, as you alluded to, I think Dr. Sue and yourself, that I got a significant heat about Tualatin High School being locked down, um, even came up at a council meeting, and people really ticked off about it, and it just really annoys me the amount of damage the high school's taken because people are ignoring it, and I will bring it up at city council uh, on our next city council meeting on Tuesday discuss what the community is doing to the high school facilities because they're ignoring uh, the orders. Um, it's just, it's taxpayer money going down the drain. It's ignoring the order. It's, um, if you live around the high school, you're supposed to respect the high school. You're all, all residents were super happy to use the facility and now they're ticked off and abusing the property because they can't have their way. And that's just very irritating to me. Thanks. Well, Mayor, again, that, that's the purpose here. If there are ways in which we can be even more intentional um, with your given communities around, you know, this is the reason why. It's not that we're trying to be difficult. It's that um, we've you've got one set of guidance, we're getting another, and we're trying to trying to make it all work going forward. So thank you. I, I, I truly appreciate it. And, and, and my commitment to each and every one of you is so that you don't have to take that kind of heat if we can help no, it. No, no. It just, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean... I mean, the, the, all these people are like, you know, I'm just, I don't want to belabor the point. I'm getting you know, all these emails ticked off of TTSD, and then they just do this damage anyway. That's just, that's wrong. And there's no excuse for it. Sorry. <laughs> um, Mayor Rudick, I appreciate, um, Frank, that very much. And I appreciate your support of what we're trying to do um, just to follow guidance. And, um, but I know, uh, unfortunately, you know, Twelfton is not alone. I've been with Pack with Pride at Tigard and knowing that um, our staff have been, you know, hassled as well as they try to, you know, stay on campus and, and facilitate those closures and being pushed back from community members. So it's equally disappointing. I'm sure that um, Mayor Snyder would agree. It's not what we want. Oh. I do. I definitely agree. I'm disappointed. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? This is my first time trying to use Google Rooms. Oh, yeah. so, yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Really? I, uh, I had trouble unmuting myself when Ken was speaking, so I think I've got this one figured out. This is my third third platform for video conferencing. So um, did you want to report out from Tiger Chair Wolf? Sure. I think, and then um, Mayor Sander, if you'd like to just touch base about that, and then I think I'll circle back, or or you can even transition from a report out, what your thinking is about the summer, and then Mayor Bubinek, I might swing back to you if you want to think about what will the summer look like. So both those issues would be great. Um, sure. Thank you, Mayor. Well, and I, I do want, so we I did have um, Tiger staff participate in this uh, session, and I would appreciate it if they would give a brief uh, report out on our status with parks because frankly the size of our park system and everything is something that I am not keeping up with on an absolute day-to-day -day basis so 
I would appreciate just a brief report out from, I'm thinking Brian Rager, our public works director is on the line um, on parks quickly. Sure, can do. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Great. Um, so we closed our dog parks. Um, so yeah, we're one of the cities you can thank for uh, uh, driving the dogs to your uh, grounds. So sorry about that. But we are uh, at the moment trying to figure out how we might open up dog parks, possibly as early as this week, uh, latest would be next week. But we're having to think about the baseline um, requirements that are in the governor's order. And we're looking at that pretty hard because there's some, there are quite a few requirements there. And we're also looking at um, the possibility of opening up some of our public restrooms. So there's a lot that goes into that as well. Uh, for phase one, when we get a phase one release, that we will also look at the possibility of um, expanding the opening to like uh, our skate park. Um, so we're, we'll, we'll be considering that. Uh, for our plan, let's see, around community messaging there is uh, there is a lot that we think we can do our uh, community engagement coordinator is if you didn't know this is uh, coordinating quite a bit with your equity uh, coordinator position there for ttsd uh, there's a really good uh, partnership going on there so we think there's a lot of uh, good that can come out of uh, working together on messaging uh, public events uh, specifically our recreation events, we have canceled through the end of August. And the one thing that we are still potentially going to try to pull off this summer, if we can do it by, you know, abiding with all the uh, requirements in the governor's order is summer camps for kids. Uh, but as you know, there's a limitation on the number of participants that can uh, that can be in that at any one time. But our parks manager and our recreation coordinator are trying to figure that out. So, Chair sure. Wolf, I would just add that I think you know we're 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 getting a lot of concern from the community mm -hmm. about just opening in general, and people are feeling. Uh, very cooped up at this point, and I, I understand the frustration. I don't understand allowing your dog to poop on a turf field, but I do understand their frustration, um, and I think everybody's feeling that, and so we all together need to figure out a way. It'd be great if it were in a consistent way to sort of move, uh, move the communities together uh, in a way that at least allowed maybe some joint messaging, particularly with the school districts or with the school district and the three cities, because I, I have to be honest with you, I don't think a lot of people necessarily know which facilities in some cases are schools or cities or whatever. Like if they were nerdy and they thought about it, they could figure it out. But most people don't really think about it. And so I think the be the, the more we can be clear and um, about and consistent, the better it will be. I don't know if that's what you were looking for, but that's yeah. what I've got so far. Well, no, I even, Mayor Snyder, I, I walk with a group of friends and I think about how close we are together from Tualatin, through Tualatin Park, through Cook Park, up to Tigard High. I mean, uh, we are um, certainly one large community. So I appreciate your thinking around how do we jointly as a, as a broader community um, try to move forward. Um, so thank you, Mayor Snyder, very much. And uh, Mayor Bubinek, I'll, I think I'll bounce it back to you in terms of some thoughts for this summer, if you have anything you'd like to share. Um, pretty much, we're kind of like the other cities. Uh, our dog parks always stayed open, though. Uh, we had the one existing dog park at Community Park, and the new one at Jurgens uh, came online during COVID-19. And is actually open also. Uh, we're just encouraging uh, physical distancing and people are actually respecting that at this time. So both those dog parks are open. The parks are open, the bike paths, the trails are all open, but the skate parks are closed, basketball is closed, fields and shelters. 
Uh, we're having a discussion on Tuesday at City Council on uh, how to progress on next things we might be able to open in the parks. More than likely, that may, might be just uh, tennis courts where, you know, tennis, at least you can still keep distance, maybe uh, unlike basketball. Um, our public events, uh, pretty much, I think we're going to cancel our summer events. Uh, and our signature crawfish festival will be part of that. Viva Tualatin, Blender Dash, all the stuff people look forward to. Movies on the commons, uh, concerts on the commons. Staff has an idea to replace some of the movies with a drive-in, which would be interesting to see how we pull off. <laughs> um, and then uh, just like Tiger, we're looking at probably half the camps for the kids being canceled. The camp we do have will be very limited and how many kids can be uh, involved to participate. Uh, what our staff has been busy doing is doing like community challenges like chalk art, um, doing scavenger hunts, uh, physical fitness classes via YouTube, uh, readings for the kids. Um, but over this summer, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think we're going to get, like has been said before, increasing pressure to open some of the facilities. I got a scathing email yesterday, actually, from uh, a resident asking about the parks and wanted me to show the science on why the playgrounds were closed and the skating parks. Uh, White said, I can't show you the science, but I can show you the governor's order. So, <laughs> but uh, I think as just we just said before, people are going to start clamoring when the weather gets nice again over these next few days. It'll be different, uh, but they're going to want to access the facilities. And um, and I know our city manager, like other city managers, are working hard on this and staff. We're going to council something on Tuesday so we can start getting a plan going. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor. And I also want to um, acknowledge Mayor Strato, I think, is on the line as well. I don't, I have to scroll down my list. I don't see you. And then I thought we could um, hear um, from um, him as well and then shift to uh, maybe Linda from a Chambers perspective. Uh, Dr. Ricky Smith, let me know also if I'm um, missing someone um, uh, on the list. Again, a little bit different on a Zoom call than being able to look around the table. Um, Mary Schrott, and then I, I see also that um, not only Linda, but Debbie from the, you know, the Tiger Chamber as well. So, yeah. yeah okay. Dr. Dr. Wolf, this is, uh, this is Mayor Sherrado. Yeah, I am on. Uh, I'm trying to navigate my way around here, but um, I can be very brief because we do not have any scheduled events in our park for this summer. Um, we, like uh, the other parks, um, have had an issue with the use of, uh, of of dogs, as probably everybody knows, Durham does have an off-leash portion of the park. But per the governor's orders, we had closed our park. Interestingly enough, Doctor, you admitted that you had come into the park because to get from Tualatin Park to Cook Park, you have to go through Durham Park. Uh, but that's okay. You're not during the public closure. <laughs> I haven't I haven't recorded the, your your confession, so uh, no, no, pre-COVID, pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, normally uh, in the summertime, we get uh, our portion of the park. It's a lot of activity for our K 10K runs and so forth. Those are all closed down. Um, we do have an enforcement issue. Uh, we just really can't. Our, our uh, safety services are provided by the city of Tualatin. And uh, I know that those uh, men and women have a lot more important things to do than keep people with their dogs out of our park. So uh, it's just a it's just a fact of life I think we're going to have to live with until um, just like so many other burdens of this uh, uh, of COVID-19. Thank you, sir. Um, and I agree. Uh, so thank you for your feedback. Mm -hmm. I really so appreciate you all taking your time to join us this evening as we try to navigate um, the, the opening back up seems um, like a much more challenging conversation than where we were in March, um, where we thought we were headed down a different path uh, than we certainly are on today. Um, so, uh, Linda, if you'd like to share your perspective and then we'll transition to Debbie, that'd be great. <clears throat> well, when I had a few minutes earlier, um, I had mentioned that I, I felt that the governor's order, it was time to move beyond that. And I really 
meant to say safely. Um, it's very clear that if you follow three protocols of wearing your mask, having hand sanitizer or wash stations, and social distancing, we should be able to do this safely, and most things should be able to return. So I'm wondering if the frustration that people have felt for being cooped up is now being taken out on physical spaces. And is there a way that we can lessen some of that um, frustration and open up some of the larger physical spaces in each community and say, we know that you're, you know, we know that you're upset, but here are spaces that have enough room to provide the correct social distancing. If you'll wear a mask, you can go ahead and come into these places. I, I think we've got to start loosening some things for people to let this aggression out or else it's going to create, well, it's going to continue to create very costly mistakes, I think. So that would be my two cents on the subject. Safety first. Okay. Thank you. Um, Debbie? So a couple of thoughts. Um, our chamber does run a farmer's market, so that is an outdoor event. And we are going to be opening that uh, in two weeks, so Sunday, the 31st of May. So that actually will give people an opportunity to get out in an outdoor environment. You do have to follow a whole bunch of social distancing and occupancy requirements. But our other outdoor events that we have as an organization is a farm to table, and we're not going to be holding that because um, mm. that's typically in August, and typically we have more than 100 people. So well, that's kind of, I would say, as from an outdoor park venue perspective. Um, I hear what Linda's saying. I was under the impression that all the trails and everything, even though congregate areas and parks were closed. So Brian, can you, is that a correct statement that trails have still been open in Tiger for people to walk on and all that other kind of stuff? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, our trails are still open. So I guess I I don't really understand why people are so frustrated in taking it out on school facilities. I mean, I understand that you know I've done that path around Twelfton High School before. And, um, Debbie, I think that's part of the frustration in Twelfton is the path around the high school has been closed. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, Dr. Ricky Smith, um, I know that Marty is on the call as a city manager. I don't know, Marty, if you wanted anything to share and is there someone, I certainly do not want to miss any of our guests who would like to, um, comment. So, um, I can use your assistance, um, Dr. Sue, or just kind of have folks, um, kind of uh, recognize that they'd like to share a bit more. I mean, I really do focus on this transition, I think, a lot from a district's perspective on being uh, mindful of the governor's order, right, which I feel kind of puts us through June and kind of this dilemma on people wanting to get out in spaces. So, uh, Dr. Sue, I'll hand it back to you if you have any thoughts on how we move. Yeah. Pardon, was there anything else you wanted to add at this point? Because um, I do have some thoughts of maybe a, an ask that I would have um, for, for our municipalities, if possible. But Mario, I wanted to give you an opportunity here as well. You know, I don't have anything to add that hasn't already been said. I, I heard, I guess I will say to the opening presentation that I, I hear the safety concerns that are being raised. We're experiencing similar challenges related to um, everything from vandalism to sign damage and everything else. But, and I will, of course, pass that along to our police department. And I think that we've been working together real time on those issues. So, and I'll just echo what Mayor Snyder said, which is that consistency, coordination, and consistent co communication is very, is going to be very important. And I know that even though we're only just now working on our advanced planning for what reopening means and what it looks like, we can certainly stay in touch as we have been with our communication staff so that um, we can reduce confusion wherever possible. So nothing to add that hasn't already been said. 
Well, I appreciate that, Arnie. So, so a couple of thoughts here, and then Mayor Boonick, I, I will quickly do a light touch relative to the 2021 school year, and I certainly want to close this out relative to graduation. So um, everyone knows how we're, we're you know, with all of your help that you provided us, we're going to celebrate an amazing class of 2020. Um, so quickly, I think my first thought is, Mayor Snyder, I absolutely resonate when you were talking about who is open and who isn't. I'm wondering about an interactive map, perhaps, that we could create across all four municipalities that basically says, here today, as of this week, these facilities are open. You know, and then maybe um, put some, some, and I don't know who's tech savvy enough among the among the four, the four of us plus plus our institute, you know, our our facility, but basically have this interactive map that says this is where you can go now, this is where you'll be able to go in July, this is where you'll be able to go in August. Because I think to your point, Linda, relative to people who are cooped up and they've had enough, I absolutely get it. Right. I mean, I kick my husband outside to go weed every so often just simply so he can get some distance and some space. I totally get it. Right. Um, and, I, and I'm no different. I have to go for my daily walk. So um, I, I think that might help as well as reinforcing these are the ways in which we can do this safely um, and giving people agency um, and responsibility as they do that. Um, and yes, we realize in Tualatin, there is a special confound and, and the part problem is, and that's why I wanted um, uh, Darren to share the map so that you can see. Once on the trail, you are now on top of, of, of school facilities. Um, and so uh, if we could, you know, have a way of, you know, sealing off that trail so people could do it without getting in. But even if we did, it's clear people are hopping fences and everything else. So, you know, I, I mean, that's that's part of the challenge that we're all going to figure out how to navigate. But again, I think a coordinated plan um, relative to communications, whatever you're putting out, we can reinforce what we're putting out. If you could also reinforce it through your city websites um, and your city newsletters and whatever that piece is. And and I know Mayor Ken here in the Highlands, um, I get daily updates uh, for my HOA. Um, and so I know that they follow them religiously. Um, and um, so I, I'm thinking that there are lots of things that we haven't really necessarily thought of in terms of leveraging. But absolutely to Mayor Snyder's, I think if we can give people the sense of you know how this is going to roll out and what's going to be available and why or why not. Um, may help a little bit and, and take some of the take the lid off of that just a little bit. Um, as to the 2021 school year, here's what I know at this point um, is that in a meeting with ODE, we have a weekly superintendents meeting. Um, they are proposing a hybrid form uh, for the for the coming school year, uh, which probably means, and I think this is where the summer guidance that we just received is sort of kicking the tires with that idea. We know that we will be um, encouraged to bring together this summer cohorts of 10 children only, 10 students at a time per teacher. Um, there has not been a top number given within a given school building, but my sense of it is, is that um, it may move us back towards that 250 where the governor started and in our earlier conversations. But these will be cohorts of students, same kids, same teacher, not mixing cohorts, not mixing teachers. Um, and if that is successful and there isn't a spike in terms of COVID, that we would expect a similar process going into the fall uh, for as long as we can be in that stance until we start to see spikes and the, and the COVID and flu season is upon us. There's a whole lot of other moving parts with that in terms of monitoring children's temperatures and coughs and all the rest and all the public health piece, we would, would love and be more than happy to push out to you all and directly to you mayors um, and to uh, Linda and Debbie um, as the primary sense makers. This is what we're hearing. This is what we're thinking. This is what it's going to look like in our buildings if that's useful to you. Um, and then you can make sense to your city councils and all the rest that you're trying to navigate. We also believe that there will be a distance learning component to this, and that's the hybrid part. So if it gets to the point where it's spiked beyond reasonably having safe congregants in, within the buildings, then we will go back into the distance learning stance. Um, I'm also, folks, considering um, the concept of just offering a distance learning component totally, because we know some families are not going to feel comfortable no matter what. Um, bringing their children back into the school until there is a viable vaccine and way in which we know that we've got this thing at bay. So that's also part of our thinking. And again, more than happy to share with you those pieces. 
Linda, I know that this has been a real concern relative to lamb on the last call that I was able to be in on with you relative to daycare. One of the things I had asked the state uh, specifically for is that they stood up this daycare, emergency daycare for essential, you know, first responders, healthcare workers, and essential uh, essential businesses. Um, they have started to take that down because we are through what appears to be the peak. My response to them has been, please don't do that, um, because we know that if we go into this hybrid model, there are going to be some families who cannot telecommute. And their children still, so there will not be a meaningful adult at home if we, as we do this hybrid of some time in school and some time in terms of distance learning. And so if there are ways in which we can get the state to wrap themselves around us and, and help us to provide expanded child care so that those children in these same cohorts can be, be in a child care setting um, and receive support while they're doing their distance learning, um, that's the concept. But I may need some advocacy from everybody else, um, you all as, as, as electeds and as um, voices for your given communities to reinforce that to the state um, as well uh, as a support system um, relative to navigating next year with the hybrid. So um, in short, that's what I know at this point. I expect that uh, the week of June 5th, we will have um, hopefully you know, permanent guidance or final guidance relative to how we should be planning for the fall. And at that point, I'd be more than happy to send out a communication to all of you and bring hey, keep you abreast of what, what we're thinking and what we're doing. Yeah, we would love to have it. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. So with that, Chair Wolf, I think we need to quickly, because I can see the time is ahead of us, um, uh, perhaps uh, just a brief uh, update from um, Director Fields uh, relative to graduation and then any questions that they might have for our, our principals. That's great. Thank you. So Director Fields, um, it's all you and your principals. All right, can you hear me? There we go. So I will be brief because the masses of the knowledge uh, come from the principals, but just wanted to share as far as there being really the intent around ensuring that all of our students and families can be a part of the celebration and ceremony. So principals done an awesome job and their team of coming up with a hybrid opportunity for our families and students to be able to engage in celebrating the class of 2020. So I will uh, let's start with Creekside and then we'll go Tigard and then Tualatin, which is sharing updates on where they are with their current planning. Thanks, Amber. Hello, everyone. I'm Russ Romas, principal of Creekside Community High School. Uh, this year, we're going to have around 95 graduates and we're planning a pretty cool celebration um, of their hard work. Uh, we are going to have a small drive up ceremony where students can gather some things that they need, like their caps and tassels and T-shirt and some cool things like that. Um, and we're going to collect some video at that time as well. We'll have staff out here um, on the sidewalk to cheer and celebrate, and we'll pass those things to the families that come up. We'll deliver to homes of anybody that's not able to make it. And then on June 4th, we're going to have a virtual ceremony in which we'll have speakers, um, and we will have a presentation of graduates, and we'll have uh, an opportunity for um, families to connect with each other and with our staff to say their final congratulations and goodbyes. So we're really looking forward to that. Thanks. All right. Hi, guys. I'm Brian Bailey. I'm the principal at Tigard High. Um, you're going to see a lot of similarities between um, Michael DeLerba at Tualatin. Our plan has been really uh, co-constructed. There are some subtle differences, um, but in general, we're both um, at our comprehensive schools dealing with between 430 and 500 graduates um, and looking at a three-pronged approach to celebrating the class of 20 um, for us and, and on campus at Tualatin High School, hopefully, um, where one graduate at Tiger, one graduate at a time will get out of the vehicle at a designated point. They will grab up their, they will grab their diploma cover. We'll have a professional photographer um, on site. They'll take their picture. Um, they'll they'll proceed through, and hopefully, if we have everything arranged uh, in just the right way, they'll also be able to um, pick up their graduate or their diploma itself um, on site, um, so that they don't have to wait for that at a later date. Um, there's a lot of potential details that are going into that event. Um, we're hoping to have perhaps our yearbooks um, in in time, where we can hand our yearbooks out to our seniors with the spring edition. They'll have that to thumb through as they are proceeding through the serpentine. Um, 
pathway of, of vehicles. Um, depending on our location and, and the availability, we, we may try to uh, procure some large signs, uh, some large um, uh, screens where we could um, display the senior video with all of their pictures and their highlights. Again, entertainment for them as they're as they're going through, along with music and and really just a, a celebratory vibe. Um, we'll have pomp and circumstance. We'll hopefully be able to have um, a bit of a procession through socially distanced staff members in their robes and make it feel as traditional as possible. Although it would just be one student um, out of their car at a time for us. That will be immediately followed that evening. Um, by a virtual celebration, which we are in the process of developing right now through a, an outside company where we're gathering video and pictures and we'll be able to put together traditional valedictorian speeches, uh, board member speeches. Um, I'll probably have to say a few words in that um, and we'll put together something where the students will have kind of a lasting memory of that event. They'll be able to get certain clips of themselves. They'll be able to post it on social media um, and try to make that a highlight of that night so that um, so that, that, that's the two-prong approach. And then the third prong will come sometime in the um, distant future. It seems to be getting farther and farther away with each piece of, of information that we're getting from the state. But we don't want the class of 2020 to completely walk away from us without the opportunity to get together and socialize and celebrate. And so likely in the summer of 2021, we would host um, a community event with music and, and food and uh, the opportunity to gather and, and say hi to the people that they've spent, you know, many of them have spent the last 13 years together um, and then give them that, that opportunity for closure as soon as we're able to gather in mass. Um, I'll hand it over to Michael. I know there are a few differences between our plans, but he can also add anything that I might have missed that is similar. Hi, everyone. It's Michael Delerba, principal at Walton High School. Thanks for all coming and, and being a part of our meeting tonight. It was really great to hear from each of your municipalities and the, the unique circumstances you're facing and how we can support you as a system. Um, I, I would think the only thing in addition to Brian laid out the three-pronged plan approach is um, just what happened last week. We took a caravan of teachers, went out into the community, so we distributed yard signs to every senior at Walton High School and their honor cords. So we sent about 40 teachers out in the community and delivered uh, signs and took pictures of students in the community. And then we had a caravan of teachers along with myself and we delivered like Ed McMahon sized um, surprise uh, posters to all of our valedictorians and our IB diploma winners uh, in the community. And that was a really fun event. Uh, we had a police escort from Tualatin PD. They were awesome flip the sirens on when kids open their doors. And it was really, really fun. Um, we really, as a team, had early on talked about parades and the possibility, possibility of parades. And we just decided against that after thinking about how difficult it would be to socially distance um, re responsibly and not create a, you know, a, a problem in the community. So we decided on a caravan instead and really let parents know we were gonna come around a certain time and uh, routed that out. And it was really wildly successful. People didn't come out running and and um, you know get get overzealous so it was a really fun event and a chance to celebrate students but also get out in the community so as, as you drive through Tualatin and Tigard and Durham and and all these outlying areas in King City you'll see lots of yard signs for Tigard and Tualatin uh, graduates and uh, and we're pretty proud that we got to celebrate them a little bit last week so that was really the only difference otherwise our schools are pretty aligned in the process they might have some subtle differences when you drive up, our graduation will be in our, our, our drive up graduation will be in our South lot. We'll have some socially distanced teacher, um, teacher spread out, kind of clapping students in and clapping students out um, in, in smaller groups. So we're really looking forward to that, that event and, uh, and just kind of being safe. That's it for us. So before we move to q and I just wanna highlight something Michael just said is just how aligned the schools have been through they're on project number, I'm not really sure anymore, um, that these three principals have managed in collaboration with humility and constantly pivoting and adding new projects to the plate from closing to distance learning to at-home learning to seniors to graduation to now fall 20 to summer programming. And they have just done it with such grace and alignment. And so I just wanna to continue to shout them out because if I could not, oddly, to be in a virtual space, I don't know that we have had this much collaboration um, and have kind of come this close as a team. So that's been really exciting through this whole process. So huge shout out and kudos to them. Um, and now I think we'll open it if there's any questions or further clarification um, that the board would like to ask.
So I wanted to give pause there for our guests, but I um, I truly just want to thank you all, um, Amber, Michael, Brian, uh, Russ. Um, this I know that our students feel that so much has been lost, but you have really lifted them up and celebrated them in unique ways, which will really make a lot of these pieces special and unique to them. Um, not minimizing what's been lost this last term, but just a huge um, thank you. Uh, for everything that you guys are doing and um, excited for the events um, and um, whatever virtual, I appreciate the shout outs to the board on the um, drive-bys on the 20th, any virtual events and Russ, you as well, that we can give our, you know, um, huge uh, um, accolades and congratulations to the graduates. We'd love to do that. Um, but I don't, uh, board members, do you have any questions for Director Fields or the principals? Okay, so I think we're I think we're good with that. Um, and I know, um, Dr. Sue, we've ran over um, a little bit. It's five fifty one, but I just wanted to kind of circle back to kind of our um, goal around summer reopening. And I think the thing I wrote down that stuck with me was the idea of consistency, coordination, and communication. And I think right now it sounds like we're kind of um, all in, and maybe some things are open and we're trying to, to figure that out as we roll into June and ultimately July. Um, and I think those are the big three C's for right now um, and how we just keep sharing and work together as we um, open up our spaces to our very eager residents who want to just get out and play and hopefully with a little better attitude than some of them are displaying. Um, but with that, Dr. Richard Smith, I'll hand it back to you. Yeah, thank you. I want to be mindful of the time. So mayors, what you can expect from us then is uh, we will write a summary of the conversation today and some of the next steps uh, at, that we've discussed and uh, send them out to you. Uh, Marty, you can ex expect the same. Um, and, 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 and if there's other staff that you want us to direct this or add to, it may very well be that we just have a, maybe what I'm doing with um, our community, which is I have weekly updates. We'd be happy to add that, you know, an, a list serve specifically uh, for this group that convened today um, so that we can stay on top of it and um, keep those channels open. So here's where we're at. This is what we're thinking in King City or Tigard or Tualatin or Durham. Um, and we can say, great, thank you. We'll make an adjustment or we can't make an adjustment, but here's here's what our next steps are so that that flow is going back and forth. And, and like I said, I really resonated to Mayor Snyder's suggestion relative to you know understanding where facilities are. I think the more that we can help our communities understand what is open, uh, what isn't open, when it might be open, or, or why it will never be open, whatever the issue is, um, and, and where to direct, um, I think will we'll go a long way um, across our municipalities in terms of supporting um, our families, and particularly our children during the summer. Um, everybody needs a break, heaven sakes knows, um, but we want to do it safely, and we don't want to have to be back in this stance any sooner than we absolutely have to, if at all. So with that, um, I just want to express my profound thanks to everyone on this call today um, and your willingness to come together. Um, and um, I know that together we're going to navigate and uh, this will not be a one-off. You will receive invitations again as we start to think about reopening um, the, the process for school going forward. Um, again, I just think this community is so amazing in terms of its collaborative efforts. Um, let's harness that um, and um, maybe, you know, we can take the heat together better than we can take the heat individually. <laughs> Dr. Sue, thank you for having the mayors involved in this. I really appreciate you having the mayors involved. Well, Mayor, I don't know how else to work. You know, you have the, the, the primary sense makers at the table, and, and I absolutely feel every inch of your pain when you are, as, do, as does our board, when you are trying to field um, the less than positive comments that we get from our constituents. And what I've, realized, what I've come to realize over the years is that they don't know where else to put it, and so they share it with us, um, as, as indelicate as it may be sometimes. Um, but I've learned that it isn't aimed at us personally. It's just a, a sheer frustration, and, and, and that's why we're here to serve. So I, I can't think of better partners than you and your fellow mayors um, and your, your city folk to help us with this. So thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. And I just want to echo that. Uh, you know, I've longed for this kind of uh, collaboration ever since I've been in public office in King City, and it had to happen 
with you in charge, you know, so I'm giving you full credit for what we're seeing right now. So okay. thank you. So it's, what, a, it's credit to the entire team here, but thank you. I'm not saying that just because you live in King City. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have enjoyed it to this point. We are certainly looking forward to being able to explore it further. <laughs> but my little my little piece of the world up here has been been, been pretty deep, pretty pretty sweet and uh, really helped a great deal getting through these days. So thank you, thank you guys, the entire team. Wonderful job. <laughs> so Kara, uh, I think we're done, and uh, we yeah. need to, these people get on with their evening. We have a board meeting. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, with that, we will adjourn our work session. And again, just thank you all for taking the time um, to join us. And I will see many of you back here at 630. So thank you all. Thank you, Dan.